Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much indeed for coming here today to look ahead to our show on BT Sport on Saturday night. Two of the biggest names in British boxing and Irish boxing, Carl Frampton and Michael Conlon, heading the way, top of the bill. That's a, a terrific card as well, as well as that. Archie Sharp against Jeff Afori. Troy Williamson, who's going to be fighting Harry Scarf from Derby, which is another excellent looking fight, and the exciting young talent, Dennis McCann, who's already making headlines and drawing fantastic comparisons with Nazim Hamad, who Frank knows only too well from a quarter of a century or so ago. But this is our next Behind Closed Doors promotion, which is happening on BT Sport, and uh, another one to look forward to, Frank. Yeah, we, uh, we've already done three, and that was us dipping our toe in the water at the time. You know, we were the first out of getting the shows on, and done what we had to do, uh, ensuring that the safety aspect, aspect of it all worked properly, and uh, getting some of our young guys out, and now we're stepping it up a gear. So, uh, as you mentioned, Carl, uh, two-time world champion. Uh, he was due to fight this summer against Jamal Her Herring, and obviously because of the virus, that didn't occur. Um, in the meantime, he's got to keep busy, so he's got this fight on Saturday. Um, he's fighting Darren Trainer, who's re replacing the original opponent. Uh, Darren has been in tr training very hard and uh, obviously fancies his chances, and it's something that Carl's got to come through. He's got to look good doing it and not make any mistakes to make sure that he gets to Kerry in the autumn. And Michael Conlon as well, the uh, world title picture there, he's very much a part of it. He certainly is, he's not far off fighting for a world title, I'm not sure he's going to do his weight, but he's 13 and 0, and if you look he's fighting Sofiane Takut, uh, Takut, I think they say he's called it, Takush, uh, who's had 40 fights and won 35 of them, he's lost against Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington is a, you know, he's a great fighter, a great world champion, and uh, this guy's experience, I think, will give Michael a lot of things to think about. But, you know, he's half the fighter we think he is. He's going to look good. Well, we'll look ahead to those in a little bit more detail in a moment or two. But in the meantime, let's concentrate on the two lads who are up here. And just a few words about, about Dennis, first of all, Frank, who we, we sort of wax lyrical about. Are we in danger of overplaying him or is he really as good as people are saying? But he's a great young talent, but that's what he is at the moment, is the talent. And he knows he's got, got to work hard and he's got to have dedication. Talent gets you so far and it's the dedication and hard work that gets you on, on the rest of your journey. But the fact is, you've only got to look at him. All over the, all over the uh, period we've had with his uh, COVID, he's been training very hard. Alan, Alan I know, has had him, had him do some strict training regimes, which he's had to do some of them in private. But, He's got the bit between his teeth. He would have fought earlier, but he had the flu. I hope it's the flu. And uh, and now he's you know, he's back in there. And he's uh, for me, he's he's one of the best young talents I've seen for many many years. And provided he keeps doing what he's doing and staying focused, and he's got married in the meantime as well. He's a married man now, so he's got a, a wife, and uh, so he's got obligations. Provided he keeps doing what he should be doing, I think he's got the potential to be one of one of the one of the outstanding young. British fighters in his generation. Before we talk about your boxing, let's let me just ask you about that. How did how did all this come about? Married married lines. Big boy now, I. But um, yeah, I was. I um, we, we met a couple about a year and a half, about a couple of years ago, and uh, it happened, and I fell in love the night. How ner how nerve wracking was it going to going to meet the parents? That was the worst part of rock and roll. That was the worst. It was, it was pretty scary. My dad a bit, looked a bit intimidating as well, so it was a bit worse. Were they instantly saying, "Yeah, this is a good idea"? Well, if you looked at me, would you say I'd say it's a good idea? Would you? Huh? So you're going. You're going to be going into this then as a married man for the first time. Yeah. New yeah. responsibilities. Are you going to be settling down, buying houses? Trying to. Trying to. Aren't I? Huh? Well, that's in the that's, that's the in the pipeline, that's the, is it? That's the plan, definitely. I should be buying the house in the next couple of weeks, actually. Matter of fact, really? so so it wouldn't be too bad. First really? one, first the money. Yeah, well, putting it, putting uh, putting your success behind you and investing it. I'm sure Frank and Alan and a lot of people are telling you that's the way to go. It's the way forward. A lot of young kids my age, they go and give five and six hundred pounds, a thousand pounds for shoes, 
and uh, and silly things. And I'm, I'm investing in, the, in in houses and properties and stuff. A house is always better than a stupid watch. Put it that way, definitely, yeah, definitely. Oh, what's time? I ain't got watch. <laughs> Dennis, uh, another, now I had a little, uh, so, little somebody had a word in my ear saying you had an unexpected contact, an unexpected phone call from Nazim Hamad. Yeah, I was good, definitely. I know his son very well, very nice kid. And uh, I actually went for a job the other day down in Sheffield, I went to the band down there. And then um, he was a very nice bloke, very nice fellow. What did Naz have to say to you? I was, I was, I was joking, I said to him, uh, I said, I got a better screw shot than you, I said. <laughs> did, he take, did he take that? He was laughing, yeah, he was laughing. <laughs> has, he, has he watched you live yet, Naz? Not live, but he, talk, he, talk, he watched me um, on, on TV now. And, how, and how, impre how impressed is he by what he's seen? Because I mean, everybody's saying you, there's a lot of similarities between how you fight and how he used to fight. Yeah, he reckons he's top, top class, he said. Just keep, keep doing what you're doing, he said. And then you'll definitely get it, he said. I reckon the world champion, he said. Frank, you guided Naz, and now with Dennis as well. How real are the, the similarities for you? Well, I think they are. I mean, obviously, I mean, Naz was a tremendous talent and went on to I mean, be a great world champion. Um, my only disappointment with Naz was the fact that, you know, he took his eye off the ball, he blew up some weight and so forth. And I think he'd been, been an outstanding world champion. And he just didn't fulfill for me what he should have done. Um, and Dennis has got to learn from that. But you know, I think Dennis is he's very smart for a young man. He's got a, you know, he looks like a, a young boy and you know, young looks and all that, but he's got a smart head Just say it, Frank. Good looking. Good looking. You want to say it, don't you? I've got I'm like the opticians this afternoon. And the uh, <laughs> and the bottom line is, you know, he's not he's not stupid and he's got you know, with with the team that he's got around him, including Alan and his manager, they're they're, they're smart people. And uh, I think that I think that I honestly do think he can be one of our outstanding young fighters. I was Providing around, he keeps working on it. I was around sort of 25 years ago when Naz was coming through, and I, I remember from those days that half your half your problem was sort of keeping his feet on the ground. But there's a big problem as well of getting him matched. It's not easy, is it? Well, we got him matched, and we done well. You did. Him actually, he won a lot of world titles on this. Um, but. But when you're finding your feet, though, you know, it's finding people who are yeah, prepared to come. You know, I, I remember when they started off, it was really simple. I can remember his first fight up for us was up in Sheffield, and he was in, in the uh, Pond's Fault, and we was in the uh, studio there in the dressing room, they were getting changed, and there was no one in the dressing room, really. and I mean no one. His trainer was, Brendan was down in the ring with another guy. And within a year, you dress them out, you could put a turnstile on the door for the people coming through. And that's what happens in boxing. You get all these hangers on, all these backpack, you know, patting your back and telling you what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. But what you've got to do is remain focused and deal with what you've got and not have your head turned. And I think that Dennis, from his background and from his, how smart he is and how say the people he's got around him, I know he's going to be focused all the way. How long do you think it's going to be before Dennis is getting up to the level where he's going to be looking for English title, British title, Commonwealth title or whatever? You know, these next three or four fights, definitely. As soon as that. Yeah. So he could potentially be, is it Ryan Rhodes, the youngest ever uh, British champion, I think? So yeah, there's a, I think there's, maybe, yeah, maybe. So there's a chance of a little bit of history there. Yeah, just, one it was, didn't we? We will see. Anyway, moving on now to the fight between Troy Williamson and Harry Scarf, which uh, is going to be a cracking fight on paper. It is on paper, it's a cracking fight. And you know, Troy last time out, that, that pole axe in, in the ring, I mean, it was an amazing knockout punch and he's shown it. And now, you know, he's in, his gang is in the limelight, he's going to get uh, great exposure. And this is a tough fight for him, but we believe in him, we believe he's got what it takes to to come through and we believe that he's got a great chance of going, of going all the way. But he is exciting, there's no doubt about that. Last six by stoppage now, isn't it? Yeah, five or six, last uh, could even be seven, I'm not sure. Is it just something that comes naturally, the power punches? Uh, I, I don't go looking for the, for the power punch, it's just if it comes, it comes. Now what, what are your thoughts about Harry Scarf? He's six foot one. And he has the ring nickname Horrible Harry, which kind of kind of tells a story. He's awkward, isn't he? Yeah, he's very awkward. Um, to be fair, you can be as awkward as you like, but we've got I've got ten rounds to pin him down, and I think I will pin him down in the later rounds. 
You think so? You think that your stoppage run could potentially continue? Yeah, definitely. I think with them ten ounce gloves on, I, th- all I, I just need to land. And uh, once I do land, I'm a, I'm a big, strong eleven stone man. So and I punch very hard at the weight. So I think if, if, if once, I, it, once it lands, you fall awkwardly. His last, his last, uh, his last fight was against Anthony Fowler, I think. And uh, Clifton Mitchell, who's involved in his training, reckoned that he froze on that occasion. And uh, so he's on a, he's, he's a guy with a point to prove. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that. It did look like he froze on the occasion. Um, but again, I think he just looked horrible on that. I think he was dead negative. And he was awkward. I think he made it awkward for Fowler switch, switching. Um, taking off it away from Fowler. Uh, great kid, but... His feet were too slow on the night, and he, uh, he couldn't cut the ring down. But I've got faster feet than Fowler, and I've, I genuinely believe that I will cut the ring down on him. And over ten rounds, I could get him out there late. Well, there's another great fight to be made. Absolutely, yeah. they go for the Fowler fight. Yeah, and be, that's another one yeah, to be made. Which great is great fight for the fans. Which is kind of what you've been advocating this yeah. week. Let's yeah. get and let's I, get heads I, together I, and make them happen. And I believe in Troy. And let's try and do it. Yeah, definitely. I welcome all comers. I want to be. I want to be the man at eleven stone. So I'll fight anybody at one hundred and fifty-four pounds domestically, and I'm very confident I'll beat any of them. They think that if they can get you onto the back foot, that you're not as effective and that you're open to right hands. What's your thoughts of that? Let him bring it. See if he can get me on the back foot. It's them who said it, not me. Before you oh, give me uh, the dead eye. Yeah. Well, we'll see on the night. Well, it's a, it's on on paper, as I say, Frank. Uh, Terrific fight and uh, and such a lot at stake, which is what you want to see for these fights, which we're which we're bringing. Because okay, it's behind closed doors and there aren't crowds there for obvious reasons, but it's a real quality matchup. It is, there's no doubt about it. We're quality fighters and Troy, that'd be your uh, was it sixteenth fight going into it. So you know he's got everything going for him, and he's you know his future is literally in his own hands, and he's capable, very capable. Hamza Shiraz, he'd be in the in the mix-up as well, presumably at that uh, at that weight. Well, it's, it's an exciting division. We're blessed with talent. Everybody, you know, there's a, there's a lot of fighters in this country. And where we are at the moment is with this terrible epidemic that we've got. Um, that we 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 do have a chance to try and make some of these fights happen. And and I've got to tell you, for the losers, it's not the end of the world. You know. Some guys win, some guys lose. I've seen fighters lose, lose fights, and then come back even better. You know, look at Liam Williams. You yeah. know, look at him now. He's looking. Yeah. He looks a totally different fighter. And so, you, you know, it's not the end of the world if you get beat. How difficult has it been preparing in the circumstances of the of the last few weeks and months? Uh, just more frustration, more frustration, more than anything else. Um, I've been in the gym. Stayed focused, my has been on the game. Uh, I train really hard, so no matter who I face, I'll be giving it 110 percent and I'm very confident I've put in the work that I'll beat anybody on the night. You've been able to keep the focus going okay, Dennis? Definitely, definitely. I've definitely got the edge in that, I reckon. I've been, I've been training all the way through, I've got a gym at home. I, I, reckon, I reckon I'm the hardest working, I reckon the hardest, fo- hardest working English fighter, or any fighter in England right now. I'll bet we are. I'll bet you, I'll bet you any money. I'm the hardest worker there is, I reckon. Well, we look, we look forward to that one. Thanks a lot, lads. And uh, Thanks, anybody who wants to have one-on-one interview uh, who hasn't done so, then the guys will be around after we've concluded our pleasantries and available to do any, any interviews that you might want. So thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday night. Thank you. Thanks, fellas.